right, in this video I'm going to talk about line integrals, and there are two different types. Um, either way, when we're integrating a line integral, we are integrating over curves. And then the two different types is that we're either going to be integrating a function or we might be integrating a vector field. And we want to do this over a curve. So here's a picture of what this would look like for this kind of first one. If we wanted to integrate over some curve, um, this curve is in the xy plane, and, and let's just say that the curve does, I don't know, does something like that in the xy plane. Now, let's say that over all of this, we have some, let me just also clarify this. So in the x, y plane, this curve does, I don't know, it does something like that in the x, y plane. All right, so that's that blue curve. Now, what if we had some sort of a plane, so a, a flat plane over this at a diagonal, and let's say that that plane was bigger here, so this is a height of the plane is right there, and then here the height is the plane is there, and, and we want to integrate over this curve. And so if the plate, height of the plane goes down, but we want to trace this curve the whole way down it, what we get is this, like a curtain. And so that's what this line integral does, is it finds this curtain. This is sort of a bad picture. Let me see if I can draw another one from a different angle. If I did like that, and then have it be over some curve in the xy plane that gets smaller. There we go. Okay. That's kind of what I was trying to draw in that picture. So it's it's like a curtain, it's wavy. So what we're integrating over here, we're integrating over some curve. So it's not just an, it's this curve. It's not just an x equals. It's not just a y equals. It's not um, in a certain x and y direction or, or a two-dimensional shape. It's completely different now. It's, it's a curve itself that we're integrating with a three-dimensional function. The vector fields we'll get into in the next video. Alright, I've imported here the part of the formula sheet with these line integrals with functions. So if you go to the formula sheet and look up on the line integrals, this is what's on there. And essentially what this is saying here is that this part right here, this f, that's your function. Then what's inside of here, this x, this y, and that z, that is a parameterization of the curve, so of that blue curve that I drew. Um, and it's a parameterization of the curve where t starts at a and ends at b. So remember, for every parameterization, we had bounds. So this would be the bounds of that parameterization. Now, what this is doing for each different one of these is it's taking a little tiny chunk, so like right there, and it makes a vector out of it, so it's got an x and a y and a z component, and if you find the magnitude of that vector, that's what you would get right here. So the magnitude of that little tiny, of that little tiny vector in there, and then what we want to do is multiply that by a height. So that's by its function right there, its height. All right, and you're adding all of those up and it gives you this curtain, so to speak. All right, so let's do an example of this. Okay, for this example, we're gonna integrate over a curve C. That's what that little C says under the integral. We're gonna integrate the function x squared Z. DS is saying that we're adding up all these little sections of that curve. Now the curve is a line from one point to another. So notice that in that formula, actually I'm going to bring it back up again. Okay, there it is. So in this formula, we need a parameterization. We need an x equals, a y equals, and a z equals that describe this curve. So now 
we've got to parametize a line. So what we need is a point on the line. So we need a point on the line. That would be 0, 6, negative 1. And we need a parallel vector. That parallel vector, we're going to take the second point and subtract the first. So 4 minus 0, that would be 4. Then 1 minus 6, that would be negative 5. 5 minus a negative 1 would be 6. So our parametization, we have an x equals, that's going to be 4t plus 0. Y equals of negative 5t plus 6, and a z equals of 6t minus 1, and t is going to be bounded from 0 to 1. If you don't remember all of this, go back to parametizations for a line um, and figure out kind of how all this works. But this is how we would get our parametization, at least for this line, and we need a parametization for every problem here. And now we can sort of plug into this whole formula in here. So we're going to have an integral from a to b. These are the bounds on t. So it is an integral from 0 to 1. Now this function here is this guy. So this is f. But this part says it's f, but plug in what x is, we found x. Plug in what y is, we found y, and plug in what z is, we found z. So we're going to plug those in. So x is 4t, so that would be a 4t squared there. And then z is 6t minus 1. So that's that function part right there. Times square root of the partial of x with respect to t, so that's going to be 4, and I'm going to square that, plus the partial of y with respect to t, here's y, I'm going to take its derivative, which is negative 5, and I'm going to square that, plus partial z with respect to t, so that would be a 6, and I'm going to square that. Uh, and then we integrate. So I've got a 4t squared, um, that would be a 16t squared times 6t minus 1. And then underneath the square root, I'm going to have 16 plus 25 plus 36. That gives me a root 77. So let's see, I can factor out a root 77. Oops, that should be a 77. I can also factor out a 16 and then integrate from 0 to 1. 6t cubed minus t squared. So I've got 16 root 77, then integrate. So t to the 4th over 4, I'm going to simplify that to 3 halves, because I've got a 6 on the top, so that would divide by 2, minus t cubed over 3, and I've got to evaluate that from 0 to 1. So this would be 16, root 77, times, if I plug in 1, I'm going to have 3 halves, minus 1 third, common denominator here, 6, so that would be 9 sixth and 2 sixth. So 2 minus, or 9 minus 2 is 7, so 16, root 77, times 7 divided by 6, and looks like I can, I can divide by 2 here. And 7 times 8 gives me 56, root 77 all over 3. So essentially what I've found here is the area of the curtain that could be found by when we take a, a this as our height, 
And look at that when, a, when we have a line. So this would be a straight line that goes from that point to that point. All right. So in the next video, I will look at the second type of uh, line integrals.